Many people think that science and God are at odds. Most scientists today don't even believe in God, but their predecessors who discovered the very things they teach were strong believers in God. The scientists that built what we have now looked in awe at science as evidence of God. We could spend our entire lives studying how amazing humans are and still not cover everything. Sociologist Rodney Stark explored the journals and personal items of 52 of the most influential scientists who launched the scientific revolution. He found that 98% of the founders of the scientific revolution were committed Christians. Isaac Newton is a name that is legendary in the world of science. He defined the laws of motion, including gravity. Albert Einstein suggested that modern science wouldn't be what it is without Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton never had calculus homework. He invented calculus. In addition to being a mathematician, he was a physicist, astronomer, and inventor. In one of his more famous physics texts, he wrote this. The most beautiful system of the sun, planets, and comets could only proceed from the counsel and dominion of an intelligent and powerful being. This being governs all things, not as the soul of the world, but as the Lord over all. And on account of his dominion, he is wont to be called Lord God. Isaac Newton was a serious student of the Bible. He studied Bible prophecy in the original languages of Hebrew and Greek and wrote extensively on the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation. It is estimated that he wrote more than four million words about God, often combining the topics of science and theology. He believed that Jesus died on the cross, rose from the dead, and is coming a second time to save those who accept him. A lesser known name in the scientific revolution is Johannes Kepler. If you are wearing eyeglasses, you can thank Mr. Kepler. He also invented the pinhole camera and the Kepler telescope, which was an improvement on Galileo's telescope. He also discovered the laws of planetary motion. He started his studies in theology, hoping to become a pastor, but he showed such talent in math classes that his teachers switched him to math. Kepler's writings show that he was a devout believer in Jesus as God and combined the topics of science and God together. Blaise Pascal was a world-famous mathematician, physicist, and inventor. He made huge contributions to geometry and understanding pressure in vacuums. Pascal's handmade calculator is considered by many as the first computer in history before electric appliances were even invented. He wrote extensively to disprove that Christianity and science are incompatible. When Pascal died, he had a handwritten poem in his coat pocket, and it said this, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, not of the philosophers and of the learned, God of Jesus Christ, my God and your God, forgetfulness of the world and of everything except God. He is only found by what was taught in the gospel grandeur of human soul. Righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you. Joy, 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 tears of joy. This is eternal life that they know you, the one true God, and the one that you sent, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. I left him, I fled him, renounced him, crucified. Let me never be separated from him. These are not the words of a passive believer. These are the deep longings of a follower of God. Another scientist worth looking at is Robert Boyle, known as the father of modern chemistry. So much of our modern life is a result of Boyle's breakthroughs, from plastics to medicines, including discoveries in the field of physics, including Boyle's law dealing with volume of gas and increasing pressure. Boyle was also known for his writings on theology, including his book, The Christian Virtuoso, published in 1690, arguing that faith in Jesus creates a greater mind, leading to better scientific understanding. He regularly gave money to missionary societies and projects that translated the Bible into other languages. 
Naturalist John Ray was the founder of our modern understanding of biology and zoology. Among his discoveries in science was figuring out what the rings inside of a tree meant. If you've ever counted the rings in a tree, you can thank John Ray for knowing what that means. Ray viewed theology as intertwined with science. He wrote a book called The Wisdom of God Manifested in the Works of Creation. This groundbreaking scientist was a creationist, not an evolutionist. The discoveries by these scientists became the foundation for modern life as we know it today. If they were somehow removed from history, which often modern scientists are because of their Christian beliefs that supposedly go against science, we would be living in a world without the understanding of planetary motion, calculus, basic physics, the circulation of blood in the human body, germ theory, or Newtonian physics, among many other things. Whether or not you believe in Jesus personally, it would be ignorant to act as if Christianity is irrelevant. In science today, it is difficult to say you are a Christian and be taken seriously in the scientific world. Christianity is not viewed as a part of an intellectual scientific conversation. But unless we want to suggest that we are smarter than people like Isaac Newton and Blaise Pascal, we need to stop listening to the idea that faith in Jesus is anti-intellectual. If these early groundbreaking scientists were right about planetary physics and calculus, maybe they were also right that there is eternal life found in Jesus Christ. Some of the brightest minds this world has ever seen have given the highest credibility to the Bible. They looked at the beauty that is in nature and realized the incredible design in the smallest to the biggest things had to have a designer. The precision of how the scientific world operates is too perfect to work by accident. As you are reading this, you are traveling at very high speeds on a planet through space. At our world's equator, the speed of the Earth is about 1,037 miles per hour. On top of our Earth's speed while spinning, we are orbiting around the Sun at about 67,000 miles per hour, which is calculated using geometry. Altogether, even if you spend the day sitting on the couch watching my videos on YouTube, you will travel about 1.6 million miles today. Earth sits about 93 million miles away from the Sun, and it's a good thing we are that far away. Any closer and we would die of heat any farther away and we would freeze. We are just the perfect distance from the sun. When I look at the grace and beauty of a bald eagle soaring in the sky, a massive whale in the ocean, or a delicate hummingbird hovering and shimmering in the sunlight, I can't help but be convinced that there is a creator that made all of this that we classify into scientific categories. The God of heaven is also the God of science. The brightest minds in the scientific world believed this, and if they can believe in God and science, so can I. The complexity in science requires me to seriously consider the existence of a creator. The bones and muscles in my body that hold me together, the immune system and circulatory systems that we have, the ability to balance and walk on two legs, the ability to hear and appreciate good music, our eyesight, and the thoughts we have in our heads we could spend our entire lives studying how amazing humans are and still not cover everything. And that's just one living thing on this planet filled with living things. The scientists that built what we have now looked in awe at science as evidence of God. To me, science is more evidence that God exists. And if He exists, and if the Bible is accurate in depicting who God is, that means that He is an incredible creator but also a God that loves His creation. I want to invite you to get to know that God in the Bible, the same Bible that Isaac Newton read, the same Bible that Johannes Kepler read, and the other 98% of the scientists in the scientific revolution. If we can trust what they taught regarding chemistry, geometry, and physics, we can also trust them on their teachings regarding Jesus and the Bible. And the same God that changed their lives and gave them purpose will do the same for you and me. I'm Jamie Houghton with 832. Thanks so much for watching. If you would like to watch more Bible studies on this channel, please be sure and subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Thanks so much.